Good morning and thank you for joining us. This is PLOS TV Africa and this is Off the Press where we bring you the major headlines in the national dailies with an in-depth review and analysis by a few guests joining us this morning. And joining me for analysis on the newspaper review this morning will be Moses Naikbe, a political analyst. Thank you, Moses, for joining us and good morning. Thank you for having me. And always we have Femi Dowu Adegoke, a public affairs analyst also. Thank you, Femi, for always being with us right here. Good morning. Good morning. And are we, are we shaking hands or are we, are we chopping knuckles? Well, everybody's been we, on. We will shake hands because we just keep our No, hygiene. no, I want to shake hands with you. <laughs> just keep your hygiene. <laughs> All right, let's get into the daily this morning. We're starting off with The Nation this morning and the first headline in The Nation newspaper. INEC proposes 34 changes to Electoral Act, lawmakers for retreat, and Oshun reverts to 6334 system in the education policy. Hmm. Buhari Tinubu Abiodun greet Adeboe at 78. He's truthful, he says right there. And Kaduna villagers to Buhari save us. We counted 51 bodies. Aerofire promises death for bandits and presidency. Government will sustain offensive against bandits. And still in the nation newspaper this morning, COVID-19, 158 aboard plane with Italian can be traced. And that's some scary stuff there this morning. And lastly with us in the nation newspaper, sacked by Elsa APC running mate close to suicide. And Mimiko supporters dump ZLP. 158 aboard plane with Italian can't be traced. How is this even possible? There's meant to be um, a manifesto. And so why can't they be traced? And it, it, it comes up pretty funny to me at this point in time, reading dates in the dailies. And like, well, let, let's start with you. Well, I'm, I'm not surprised. Why aren't you surprised? <laughs> I will tell you, uh, during, our, during the last election, yes. I, was, I happened to be one of the candidates. And uh, we went, I, I don't want to mention the security outfit. Um, you know, before they come and pick me up. We went for one of the screenings with the security outfit. Do you know that I took my bag, I entered the premises of the security outfit, supposed to be one of the formal security outfits in Nigeria. Yes. I took my bag, nobody checked my bag. I went into the conference hall, past several security levels and sat down. Nobody checked my bag. I had to walk up to the superior there and said, how come I am in this kind of premises and nobody have asked me, sir, what is in your bag? That is how bad it is. Yeah. You understand me? Yes. And now you are saying that uh, 158 people cannot be traced. Cannot be traced. Me, I am not surprised because, number one, if you, you want to take, if, if people feel a form, in this kind of situation, you're supposed to go extra mile. Make sure that you confirm the numbers that they are putting. Yeah. Make sure that you call to make sure that you know where they are staying before you let them go. If you don't want to quarantine them. So yeah. there is no security in Nigeria because this story I told you is a lie story. There is no security in Nigeria. So don't be surprised. Yeah. We are living by the mercies of God. Oh, wow. and, and Femi, up to last weekend, a few of my friends who came, who came in through our international airport still said the same thing, the same procedure of <laughs> filling forms to ask if you've experienced so-so and so, it's still what has been obtainable. <laughs> at, our, at our airports, are we, are we safe? There the, the, the are different messages from the Ministry of Health, the federal government, that we should, there should be no panic, I mean, yeah. that they're, they're on top of the matter. Yeah. What do you say to this? 158 Well, in as much, well, in as much as it's scary yeah. and it's very unfortunate, uh, we have, I've said it before and we've been saying it over time, we have refused to become a process system. We just do like a jungle. We don't have processes. And I've been, uh, when you hear some people's argument, they say when you go to other Western world, you don't see anything physical. But because they've gone to database, they have their data so they can work and they have their technology. Yes. But we, when we don't have these things in place, we need to do it the right way. It's unfortunate that the Ministry of Health is making so much awareness and we're not seeing, we're not, they're not matching their talk with the actions. And I think it was last week that one of the senators was actually making reference to this on the floor of the Senate. Uh, I think it was Senator Boroughface, who said when he went to South Africa, they were being tested from the aircraft. But when he got to Nigeria, he was handed a paper to fill in 
his details. Mm -hmm. So he just tells us where we are, but I hope we, we will get better. Now, now, the whole system seems to need a overall. Now, we, we've come to accept the fact that we have more powerful personalities than yeah. our, our institutions. Yeah. How do we begin to address this and correct this? Moses, my brother, I will tell you, I always come here, I will tell At least you let's truth. have the system function. No, no, no. Regardless Ex excuse of fact. me, excuse me, sir. Yes. The system cannot function if you don't have a functional head. You need a functional head for the system to function. The system is driven by a head. Yeah. Like we are here now, there are people behind the scene man, pressing some buttons for people to hear us and to see us. Yes. Now, what, what has, the pre, has the president addressed us on this issue? It shows that this, the, the government is, is out of touch with reality. We, we can sit here and, and say all we want to say for, 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 for how long, it shows that we are being governed by people who are, in, who are out of touch with reality. If the head is not functional, the system can never be functional. Let's stop wasting our time. All right, let's go to the Vanguard quickly. And in the Vanguard this morning, minimum wage, industrial unrest looms in vestities, and petrol subsidy cost drops 22.5% as federal government spends 43 billion naira in January. Fresh Kaduna killings, no negotiations with terrorists, bandits, says El Rafai, as Bari vows to punish corporates. And still on the novel coronavirus, 58 underwatch in Lagos, Ogun, Italian, 70% stable. 19 cases in Lagos, 39 in Ogun, being watched, says the NCDC. And Oshun government reverses Arabia Shalat's education policy. ex INEC chair Iwu claims curve for COVID-19. And IMF World Bank pledged assistance to COVID-19 affected member countries. And also, Agbawu Sius Oluo demands 100 million naira in damages. And that's it in the Punch newspaper. Our, our security challenges seem to be um, every day, the, the new happenings. And Kaduna State, again, has expressed another attack. One would think, you know what, we're, we're making headway the next minute. Um, they make you realize, you know what, we're far from what the solution should be. I mean, what's, what's your reaction to, to the recent killings in Kaduna? And so far, the, gov the governor's come out and said they've counted as much as 51 dead bodies. That, that is mayhem. You see, <laughs> these security issues, I'm, I'm tired of talking about it, but I just, just have to say something about it. When you negotiate with terrorists, with bandits, you embolden them to do more. Oh, he has said no negotiations. No, 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 no. Yes. There was a time the Northern governors came together. Yeah. They, and they, they held and they, they and they said they wanted to negotiate and they even paid compensation yes. to these folks to stop killing. Well, if I did that, I mean, sometimes, yes, I mean, so, the, the so hurts men, the, the so, killer so, hurts men. Yes. So, so see, see, whether you like it or not, these people are playing out a script. They are, this is their business. They are playing out a script. And the governors and this government, they are, not, they are not sincere. They know that if I kill some few people, they will call me beside where I'm uh, along. They will call me by the side and they will give me some money. You understand me? So these people are not serious. Look at in Chad, or, or is it Chad or so? They, 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 they executed some, some Boko Haram suspects. But in Nigeria, we are reintegrating them. Absolutely. Yeah, let me have your thoughts on that, um, Femi. Yeah, you see... The, Kaduna, the recent Kaduna killings yeah, and the, it's, it's the rehabilitation program going on and no, the no, radicalization of no, those insurgents. It's, it's really uh, unfortunate that this is happening in Kaduna again. If you recall that there have been several mayhems and killings in Kaduna yes. over the years, and we thought it had gone down. But like he said, you don't negotiate with terrorists, you don't negotiate with armed bandits. They're supposed to face you kill the, them. Full, the full rot of law. Yes. Uh, it's not only in Chad. I think it was last week Friday in Egypt. Some Islamic, uh, uh, what do you call them now? Uh, like Boko Haram's family in uh, Egypt. I think 32 of them were sentenced to death. But here in Nigeria, on the floor of our Senate, that's what we're discussing to give them foreign, Western education, foreign to foreign yeah. education. Yeah, well, we, well, we have, um, they call them repentant, rehabilitated, repentant? radicalized already, um, being mm. sent back into the community. I mean, how much of a danger does this pose to, to our national security? How much of a threat is this? Because we have them constantly being thrown back into the society after the rehabilitation program. <laughs> Moses. See, let me tell you something. Yeah. These guys released right now, they are sleeper cells. They are sleeper cells. 
and they can be reactivated anytime. See, exactly. this government is not sincere. This government is not sincere. Absolutely. These guys should be in jail or they should be executed or they should be made to be in jail working and producing things for people to consume. If we are in a serious society, this people should be, you cannot take arms against a state. Look at IPOP, for instance, now. They have been proscribed. Yes. These guys haven't taken arms. People that have taken arms, you are granting them amnesty, and you want to take them abroad and give them and train them with our with, with taxpayers' money. This see, let me tell you something, my brother. This government is up to something. Is they are not telling is, us. Is the there truth. an alternative? To, the alter to, is there an alternative to this present move of de-radicalizing and rehabilitating and integrating them back into reintroducing back Can into the society? The alternative, see, there is no alternative. If these guys are book, this, if these guys are Boko Haram, if these if these guys are Boko Haram um, members, yes. they, they, it's either they are jailed for life or they are executed. There should be a law like that. If they execute it, it will be a deterrent to other people. Because right now, I can go and claim a book, and I'll, they will take me to maybe Singapore or somewhere and train me, and I'll get a better education, and they'll be paying me stipends. So it is a business. It's a lucrative business. Yes. And this government should tell Nigerians what is going on, because they are not sincere with Femme, us. do you subscribe to, to Moses' thoughts on this? I think I agree with him on some of his thoughts okay. on this government being unsincere. Because the truth is that, you cannot be telling us on one hand you are fighting you are fighting insecurity and on the other hand you are embracing it. But let me give you a quick example. I think it was in the, in the dailies last week, the Bauchi State government. The Bauchi State government came out and said they're not going they're not able to pay for the WAHEC exam for the students. And I think it was on Friday <laughs> that the students took to the streets, the secondary school students in Bauchi State, they took to the streets. They took their own. I was happy with that because I'm, I want Nigerians. I've always said it. The people need to take their future in their hand. I'm not saying fight, but make it known that you are not you are not in agreement with what the government is doing. Okay, you could not pay. I think 600 million naira for all the WAEC exams, but the same government appropriated 3.6 billion naira for cars for the uh, government officials. It's 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 not making sense. All right, let's, let's quickly move to this day. This morning, the first headline in this day newspaper with plant demilitarization, NSC to unlock Nigeria's growth potential. And also, Buhari offers solace as bandits kill 51 in Kaduna. Coronavirus, Nigeria places Italy, Iran, South Korea, Japan on watch list, tracing 156 co-passengers of infected Italian Caution school against forcing students to wear face masks and fire me orders screening of passengers at motor packs. And again, Supreme Court adjourns EADR's judgment, reversal application hearing. Let, let's spot on this a little bit, the EADR stuff. How, how do you see it's panning out at the end of the day? Well, I, well right now that we have um, international scrutiny yes. on this particular issue because the U.S. is interested and some other um, um, foreign um, bodies are interested. Yes. You know, I, 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 I don't think the leadership of the Supreme Court will have the moral rectitude, the moral strength to do what... I hope... The, let, me, let, let me say, I pray they have the moral strength to do what is right. What, what is right for them to do? What because is the number right one, for them to do? No, yes. yes, number one, INEC is the body that is saddled with the responsibility of supervising an election. election yes. And you cannot dismiss their submission on a particular election and then you superimpose your thought on that election. Yes, By dismissing INEC submission on Imo's election shows that you have undermined the institution called INEC. INEC. Absolutely. You, you, in, the presidential, in, in the presidency, you upheld INEC. And you said there is no server. And now, when it comes to emo states, you are undermining them and saying they did the wrong thing. So you cannot be speaking with both sides of your mouth. Yeah. So I expect that um, the Supreme Court will be humble enough to say we make, there are two grounds. INEC said this is not right. Yes. You are saying INEC is wrong. wrong. And you, then the, the total number of accredited voters was more than the number of um, vote, um, the, sorry, the vote caster was more than the number no, of accredited, accredited voters. voters yes. So that is where we are expecting the those technicalities that the, that the Supreme Court will be able to do what is right. Do, do, you, yeah. see, do you see this panning out this way, um, Femi? Well, well, if our Supreme Court wants to 
regain or the judiciary wants to regain is once lost trust and believe. I believe they should do the right thing. And like he said, and remember when you said from the beginning of this discourse this morning, you said why our institutions, there, and this, he just gave one, of a, one a good example, by the Supreme Court undermining INEC in its own area of competence. Because INEC is supposed to be the umpire of the election. And I've, I keep saying it, we don't have democracy. If we keep going to court to go and get judgment, that means sometimes the people are short change. The wish of the people is not coming out. Now, gentlemen, I mean, this, this is it. I mean, what, what's the way forward in all of this issue, the, the insecurity and bedeviling our nation, as I said, is the killings ongoing, the coronavirus. There seems to be a whole lot. A nation is, is trying to, to grapple and deal with at this point in time. Um, Moses, your, your, your final thoughts this morning. My final thoughts. This, the, 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 the Nigeria as a country has failed. And there is a need for all the interested parties to sit down and discuss the continuous existence of this. Interesting parties mean who? Nigerians and who will represent us? People have said a referendum. Are you one of those that subscribed for a re referendum? Whichever means, will, whether through a referendum yes. or through adopting the confab, some, the confab we've held in, in the past, yes. you understand me? We need to sit down and what ask... Ha what, what happened to that confab report and, and submissions? <laughs> no, no, they, they, some, some, some people, some people are not happy with it, so they, 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 they will not want it to be in, 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 in force. Okay. So what we need to do is, my brother, we need to sit down and talk to ourselves, just as I was talking to him off camera before we came on set. We need to sit down and discuss this artificial union called Nigeria. Is it working? Or should we seek a way to either reorganize this country or disengage this country? Femi, okay. that's what this morning, please. What my own is slightly a bit, yeah, I, what he said is, for, is a long term, yeah. but on the immediate. And I, I will call on Nigerians, we need to put more pressure on our legislative harm, which is the Senate and the Federal House of Rep. Yeah. Nigerian constitution, they said they've set up a review committee. That constitution must be reviewed. The 1999 constitution? Yes, because it is not people's constitution. That constitution is not even for a federal system. It's for a unitary system of government. So if we don't get that right now, for the people to be determined, which will now lead us to what he's talking about, the people will determine how they are governed. The people will determine their own future. We have kept Nigeria in the hands of a few for 60 years, and this is where we are. Femi Adugoke, public affairs analyst, thank you very much for joining us for all the press and political analysts. Moses and Nayakbe, thank you very much for your contributions this You're morning. You're welcome. I hope we do the right thing because Nigeria is at the brink of implosion. Thank you very much, Moses. And that's what we can take this morning on all the press. Join us again same time tomorrow. This is Plus TV Africa, and I am Benny Ark.